In this video, we will explain how to create an incident response plan. But first, what is incident response? Incident response is an approach to managing a security incident process. An incident response plan is needed to approach security incidents systematically. A successful incident response plan includes the following six stages. 1. Preparation. 2. Identification. 3. Scope. 4. Eradication. 5. Recovery. 6. Lessons learned. Let's deep into for each step. Preparation. Creating a central registration system. It is important in terms of saving time that all data can be examined from a single point with a central log collection system that can manage large files. Time synchronization. Enabling NTP on all devices in the network is important for matching the time information of the logs collected. User account management. The fact that the usernames of different accounts belonging to personnel are the same and different from other personnel makes it easy to monitor user activities in the event of an event. Management of system and service accounts. The administrators of the services and systems used should be appointed and a document should be created on how to reach these managers if needed. Asset management. Instant access to information such as devices, operating systems, patch versions, and critical status should be available. Secure communication. If necessary, the team may need to communicate independently of the internal network. For such cases, mobile phone or secondary emails can be used. Legal transactions. The method of who will initiate the judicial process and in which situations should be determined before the incident occurs. 2. Identification. Review. For a potential suspicious incident, preliminary information about the incident should be gathered. Then it must be decided whether the situation is a suspicious event or not. Assignment. The first person to examine the incident must be determined. The person should take notes about the review. Using the checklist. There should be checklists for the analysis to be made in order to ensure consistent responses to incidents. 3. Scope. Characterize the event. Since determining the event will determine the actions to be taken, it is important to determine the type of the incoming event. For example, DDoS, malware infection, data leak, etc. Taking action. Action should be taken according to the technique used to intercept the attacker's method quickly. If there is an account that it is captured, simple measures such as account deactivation and IP blocking should be done quickly. Data collecting. The image of the volatile memory along with the firewall, network traffic and other logs will be required for the investigation. Isolation. Unplugging the compromised system could be a solution, isolating it is a more viable solution. After the systems affected by the incident are determined, the possibility of the attacker's spread in the network is cut and volatile information is collected, the next step can be passed. 4. Eradication. Identifying the root cause. With the information obtained in the second and third stages, the root cause of the event should be determined. The attacker must then be completely kicked out. Determining rootkit potential. If rootkits are suspected in the system, the disk should be cleaned and a clean backup installed. After the installation, the latest updates of the existing applications and systems should be installed. Improve defense. Operating systems, applications used, network, DMZ, etc. The deficiencies of defense in areas should be determined and work should be done on how to make improvement. Vulnerability scan. Potential attack points on networks and systems should be identified and corrected by performing vulnerability scans. When the necessary arrangements are prepared to prevent the event from recurring, the recovery phase can be started. 5. Recovery. Verification. Verify that logging, systems, applications, databases, and other operations work correctly. Restore. At this stage, the restore operation is coordinated. Monitoring. Systems should be monitored for recurring events. When there is no repetitive harmful situation or unusual activity, the next step is taken. 6. Lessons learned. Writing a follow-up report. The report includes the examinations with the expert and the executive, the stages of good and bad working in the intervention plan, and the recommendations regarding the process. The report should be written in a way that the manager is sure that the event has been closed. We explained each step of creating an incident response plan. Hope this video will be helpful for you. Thanks for watching.